All right, welcome everyone to this, the, the first example um, in our installment looking at the, the normal distribution uh, in the context of hypothesis testing. So, um, so your typical question will be as the one that I presented here, we're going to unpack it so that we really understand what um, the, the, the concepts that are present. So here we're told that a certain company believes that the average customer waits 180 seconds before being answered with standard deviation of six seconds. Um, so what this is providing to us is providing the historical record and, and this will form what we will call our null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is a statement as to what we believe is true based upon um, past experience. Um, so if we were to, um, to to jot this down, we would summarize it as our null hypothesis H0 and mu to be equal to 180. So that is the historical record. So H0 is what we call the null hypothesis. And an hypothesis is a claim, um, a, a belief that which we hold to be true. And that might be independent of of um, testable evidence or it, it might be um, uh, post testing or examining the record uh, the evidence on evidentiary record all right so we're then told that the so we know what the mean and the standard deviation is and we know that they, they follow normal distribution we will come back to that an independent review of 40 calls finds that the average waiting time is 190 seconds. So here someone goes out and they want to test the claim. Um, and this will allow us to form what is called a, an alternative hypothesis, that which would we would accept if we rejected the original claim. Um, so an independent review of 40 calls finds that the average waiting time is 190 seconds. Assuming that the waiting times follow a normal distribution and using a 5% level of significance, test whether or not there's evidence to support the claim that the waiting time is longer. And notice here the key, waiting time is longer than 180 seconds. So the examiner is quite explicit in terms of what the alternative must, must be. So we're, we're testing whether or not there, there's actually an increase in the waiting time. And that's what longer means. So it's, it, there, there can be either an increase or decrease, or we're just checking to see if there's any change. So because our alternative therefore would be that mu is greater than 180. So if they use, if they had used um, check to see whether or not the waiting time is different from 180, we would not use greater than, we will use not equal to. So there are three possibilities, either mu is greater than 180, mu is less than 180 if we felt like there was a decrease, or mu is not equal to 180 if we're just looking for a change and we're not going to specify the change. Now, the, the next thing to note here is that we're testing at what is called a 5% level of significance. We're doing a 5% level of significance test. Um, so, um, understand what the 5% level of significance means. Um, so, th there are two types of errors we can... So, let me draw an analogy here. Um, so, let's say you're in a, a, a courtroom and someone is being tried for for an offense before the um the law now there are two possible errors that can be committed now, one error is that we send an innocent man to jail and this the second error is that we send i set a guilty man free all right um so the first error is what we're interested in remember before the law we are presumed um, to be innocent or, or, or not guilty. So the 5% uh, uh, the level of significance could be understood as the, prob the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. That's a probability of sending an innocent man to jail, all right, sending a man to jail when he's actually innocent. Um, so here 
we want that we want that error to be very small we want the the, the probability of sending an innocent man to jail to be quite small and here we are setting it to be five percent so um technically that is the probability of accepting of uh, of rejecting the non-hypothesis when it is actually true so the five percent is the probability of rejecting h naught when h naught is actually true all right and we're going to see how that works in the context of the problem all right um so we can note that so the five percent level of significance equal probability of rejecting it's not when it's not is true all right uh, so let's go to the next bit. So our first statement, even though the examiner does not tell us, we never do these type of questions without specifying the um, the hypothesis. And in some instances, the examiner will tell you, but even if the examiner doesn't tell you, you need to do this. The next step is you're going to identify the distribution. So this is step one. Step two is identify the distribution. And we're told here, that they, the waiting times follow a normal distribution. Um, so here, we're going to use the, the distribution for the mean. Um, so here, so are the average, so the average customer, all right? So the average waiting time. So X bar follows a normal distribution with mean mu, and variance sigma square over n. So in this problem, um, our x bar, the mean is 180, sigma is a standard deviation, and that's given to us as six seconds. So that would be um, six square over n, n is the sample size, and we're told an independent review of 40 cards. So we're applying, although it has not been specified here, we're applying what's called a central limit theorem. So the, most curriculums say that you don't really need to know that you're applying the central limit theorem. Um, but the central limit theorem is one of the, the most important theorems in statistics. And it basically says, that regardless of what the parent distribution is, regardless of, of what distribution X follows, X bar will always follow um, a normal distribution. All right. Um, so that's the, that's the bulk of the central limit theorem. So, all right. So our first step is to write down the established the hypotheses. Our second step is to note the. Um, the distribution of the, the variable that we're, we're looking at, which is X bar. So X bar follows a normal distribution. The mean is 180 and the variance is 36 over 40. The, the next thing that we want to do is to diagrammatize our information. So that's 180 right there. Now, what is the observed value? So the observed value is 190. All right. So the big question is this. Um, if the probability here is smaller than 5%, then 190 lies in what we call the rejection region or the critical region. So if this area, is it smaller than 5%? Um, if yes, reject H0. If no, then accept H0. 
So if it is smaller than 5%, 190 falls inside the critical region. Um, and if it falls inside the critical region, that's also called the rejection region. So we're asking ourselves the question, if we observe 190, is it really by chance? Is it, is, does 190 accord with the assumption that mu is equal to 180 and the variance is 6 squared over 40? All right. Are we likely to see that occurring if indeed the, the null hypothesis is true? Or is there really a very small chance of that occurring? All right. So let's see what's the chance of 190 occurring. And if that chance is smaller than 5%, then we're going to say, mm, not really sure about this. We're going to reject it. All right. So, uh, so, so here now, what we're going to do is we're going to now go to our calculator. We're going to look at the probability that X bar is greater than 190. And we're going to ask ourselves the question, is that less than or equal to 5%? All right, so that is the question in front of us. So we're now going to go to our calculator, we're going to go to distribution, um, normal CD, all right. So here, we're going to look at the, the opposite. We're going to look at less than 190. So the low is going to be um, an arbitrarily small value. Um, and since we're dealing with time, we will choose zero as the lower. And the upper will be 190. Um, sigma will be the square root of this. So the square root of 6. Um, 6 squared divided by 40 and then mu will be 180 all right and so when we do that um, we get approximately one so uh, and then if we if we do the opposite therefore we're going to get um, uh, approximately um, zero so so here this is going to be um, one minus one which is equal to zero so since zero is smaller than five percent then therefore we're going to reject h naught in favor of h1 all right so conclusion reject H naught since the probability that X bar is greater than 190 is less than 5%. All right, so what would we say in the exam? Um, we would say in the exam that there is insufficient evidence to support the claim that the average time that cost that the customer waits is 180 um, seconds um, ad additionally or um, moreover or otherwise we could also say that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the waiting time is longer than 180 seconds at the five percent level of significance all right so hopefully um, that clarifies how we would go about this um, this problem using a probability, what is called a p-value method, a probability approach. We are also going to look at this using a cr critical regions method, and I'll show you how to do that shortly.